do we get started or find our next step? Yes, we're busy people. Yes, we're not perfect. And we've seen that those things don't have to stop us. But what if we're just not sure what to do next? I mean, that's how I feel about pretty much all of parenting. And I have no idea how people did it before net mums and Facebook groups where you could go and ask stuff. But they must have managed somehow. Now, over the last five years, I've done most of the combinations of being at home full time all the way up to working almost full time. And the challenges in those seasons are a little bit different. But actually, overwhelmingly, the thing that I found the hardest is all the different demands on your time and attention, juggling the mental node. You've got the washing machine beeping, beep, 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 because that's done. You're on hold listening to something horrendous uh, because you're, uh, I don't know, the toilet is broken. You're trying to uh, get in contact with a plumber. Someone needs their bottom wiping. Someone always needs their bottom wiping, don't they? And you're texting at the same time, trying to spot with someone at the coffee rotor for church because you're going away at the weekend. And in that context, with all that noise, with all that chaos going on, to start to think about your own relationship with God and investing in that, and even more so to have the time and energy and space to think about your children and their relationship with God can feel like just one thing too much, one more thing to squeeze in, one more thing to find time for, and it can feel really hard. Now, I'm part of the team at Parenting for Faith, and uh, we create free resources to raise God-connected children and teens. And at the very heart of that is something called the five key tools. Now, these are brilliant if you're busy and if you're imperfect, because they require no preparation, no theology degree, and no craft cupboard with resources where you know where to find them and they're not all going to fall out on you, okay? <laughs> they are just tools for you to learn, to have in the back of your mind, the back of your head, so that when opportunities pop up with your child, with your teenager, you can draw on them and use them wherever you are. And for me, these tools have been really significant in changing that relationship with God and my children's relationship with God to being another thing that drains me, that demands my time and attention, to actually being something that sustains me, that helps me in my walk and my journey of parenting. Now, I don't have time to go into all of them, but I'm going to tell you about two today, uh, creating windows and framing. So let me tell you about my little boy, not long after he learned to walk. He started making a very strange noise. So he would be walking along. I don't know why I'm walking. That is not how an 18-month-old walks. Massive nappy, bottom out. And he required his left arm to propel him. So he walks like this. I don't know if any other child has that issue. So he would be walking along. And every now and again, he'd stop and fall over like they do. And when he stood up, he'd go, Ugh! carry on with his. I don't know if you held his arm still, if he could still do that. But anyway. Uh, very strange noise. I thought, what is this? Why are you making this odd noise? Is it, I know what you're thinking, is it a nappy situation? Was not about the nappy. He wasn't in pain. I mean, sh should I have been oiling this child? Is this something I don't know? No, it was none of those things. I found out what it was one day when I went in. My mum, his gran, had been looking after him. She was doing a puzzle on the floor. I walked in, she said, hey, would you like a cup of tea? Absolutely, always, I would like that. So she got up from the floor and went to turn the kettle on. And I thought, aha, I know why you make that noise. You have seen someone significant and important in your life doing something, and you have copied them. As a one-year-old, you do not know that is not an essential part of getting up from the floor. You see, our children learn by watching us and then copying, finding their own version. And creating windows, it's all about giving them just little glimpses of our relationship with God, helping them to see or hear or understand better. And those can be tiny tweaks, things like praying out loud or letting them overhear you praying with a friend. Let me take you somewhere else now. Let me take you to an art gallery. Hands up, anyone likes an art gallery? Oh, a fair few in the room. I would love to say that I love an art gallery. I wish I was that cultured. The honest truth is, not really my thing. So last time I ended up in an art gallery was because I was in, ho uh, in not hospital, on holiday. And uh, it was raining. We've all been there. You go on TripAdvisor, what is indoors and free? And it was this art gallery. And it was a little bit different, a bit modern, lots going on. And uh, so we went in there. And it was not what I was expecting at all. There were not frames and pictures on the, on the walls. 
And it wasn't actually until I realized some Japanese tourists were taking a photo of me that I realized I, I was in the art. I was not only obscuring it, I was actually in the thing that was the art. You see, I prefer an art gallery that has pictures with frames, with an explanation about what the picture is and how expensive it is. Because then you know what you're supposed to be looking at, don't you? And you know what it is, uh, and you know if it's very expensive not to let your children near it in case they damage it. And we frame all sorts of things in life for our children. We say, don't touch that, it's hot. But we don't always explain to them where God is in life. We don't always encourage their, uh, their questions and explore those with them. We don't point things out that it would be interesting and useful to look at. And we can do that. All we need to do is take a little bit of time to help them to understand what they're seeing and hearing. Something like, I, I was really scared when that man was angry because he thought that I'd scratched his car. I was praying in my head the whole time, asking God to give me the words to say. To say. Just a tiny tweak. Or in church, during the sung worship, we're not just singing karaoke at a wall. Actually, let's look at how people are choosing to connect with God in different ways. Are they closing their eyes? Are they reading their Bibles? Are they lying on the floor? Are they worshipping? What are they doing? What works for them? And just explaining that's what they're doing. They, they haven't just fallen asleep, unless they have. Then you can explain that. So in these last few minutes, I just thought I'd explain a few examples of what this has looked like for me as a busy and an imperfect parent. Your version will look totally different because you are you and you are perfectly positioned to parent your child where you are. But I like to have someone else's version and then that sparks an idea to adapt or tweak for myself. So this week should be a week of national mourning in my household. It is the first week that my son has not napped a single day. Anyone miss nap time? Nap time used to be... It's a beautiful, beautiful thing, and it is gone forever. But anyway, while it lasted, that was my time to have a cup of tea, sneaky bit of chocolate, and uh, connect with God, have my space with him. Now, my mind wanders and my handwriting slow, so I like to type. I use a journaling app, and that helps me. And I very deliberately let my older child see that that's what I was doing and explain to her, I framed for her, Mummy's just having some time with God. I'm just typing. I'm just telling him how I'm feeling. I'm asking him what he wants to say to me today, and I'm writing it down so I can come back and look at it. I do loads of different things on the computer, and so I could have been paying bills. I could have been scrolling social media, but just that little tweak helped her to understand that that's my relationship with God. There was a stage when I was reading the baby reading the baby, feeding the baby. If you know how to read babies, that's marvellous. But when I was feeding the baby, I would read my Bible on my phone. So uh, a little, uh, go on a little app, get a verse for the day, something like that, a little bit of encouragement. Again, scrolling on your phone, reading the Bible, looks the same as scrolling on your phone on social media. So I just explained to my child, this is what I'm doing. I'm seeing, I don't understand this verse, I'm going to ask someone about it. Or, hey, this verse is really great, it's really encouraged me. Maybe you do something like that. Maybe you have some time with God. You get a verse for the day, a notification, something like that. But it's when your child is out, or they're at school, or they're asleep, either because it's late in the night or because it's early in the morning, depending on if you've got a teenager or a small child. But you could still frame that for them. You could mention, hey, this verse came up. I don't know what it means. You could leave it out. If you have a physical Bible, highlight it, leave it out. You can make that useful verse your lock screen. You can stick it up by the kettle. And hey, why not change it up now and again and do it when they are around? If you normally do it when they're off playing Xbox um, because you know they're going to be busy for a long time and not bother you, why don't you sometimes do it when they're doing their homework and sit at the table next to them? I love putting worship music on as well. There is a time just before tea, it lasts about half an hour, where my normally very pleasant children are unable to either be, they have to be attached to me or attacking each other. Those are the two options. And that has become my time to stick some worship music on. And I just explain, I just frame for them, hey, I just want to be reminded that God is good, so I'm telling him that. Or much more often, mommy's really tired, and I just want to know that God's here with me and that he's looking after me. Your version might be different. It might be going to collect a teenager from youth group. Could you stick worship music on while you're there and while you're sat waiting in the car park and leave it playing whilst they get in the car or share something that's helped you or a lyric that stood out to you? As I say, those are just two of the five key tools. Creating windows, 
framing, unwinding, chat and catch, and surfing the waves. Uh, they're all available on our website, parentingforfaith.org forward slash tools. If you want to really dig deeper, there's an entire eight session course which goes in loads more depth. And we also do a weekly podcast which is about how to apply them to daily life. Your version is gonna look different. You are unique parenting your unique child and you are the expert in that child. So have fun, experiment. You can't get it wrong. Just try these things out and see if you can find your next step. <laughs>